And you, who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If, indeed, you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Hello again, I'm Pastor Matthew Coleman from First Baptist Church here in Clay Center, Kansas, and we welcome you back to our Ministry Minute as we look at Paul's letter to the Colossians. This letter, which was inspired by God to encourage them and to motivate and challenge them and help them as they were dealing with some false teachings. We look at a latter part of this first chapter, and it really is an example of before and after. You know, very often there's infomercials and things like that where there's products that they're trying to sell you, and they'll show you the person before and they'll show you the person after the product has been applied. And this verse, this passage rather, it gives us that same kind of a picture of before Christ and after Christ. Before we see is alienation and the status of being an enemy, and after we see is reconciliation and being presented. I begin by thinking about that word alienation. You know, it's a word that we don't really like and nobody likes to be alienated and it carries with it the idea of being estranged and it also carries the idea of being shut out from fellowship, shut out from intimacy, which refers to a relationship. But it also speaks of those that are not being shut out from an external source, but rather are shutting themselves out. And it's those uh, that are transferring, because that's another idea that's in that word of alienation, of being alienated, is to transfer to another owner. And it's the idea that we are transferring ourselves to another owner, from God to Satan and self. And so it begins by saying, you know, you were alienated, you were enemies, and those enemies are, you know, we think of enemies, um, and sometimes it's kind of not passive, but it's a mild term. But this word for en enemy means somebody that is openly hostile, somebody that is bent on inflicting harm. And so it's a pretty intense a status or state of being an enemy. It's someone that has irreconcilable hostility. And that is demonstrated in, a, a, in wicked or evil works. And those wicked or evil works are those that have actions that result in agony or pain. And so we begin, uh, this passage begins by talking about uh, people as starting as alienated and as enemies, as wicked, as those that have set themselves apart from God, those that have left his team and, and transferred to the team of Satan and self. But in the middle of this passage, we see that word that we talked about last time, reconciled. And that is to be changed completely from one state to another. And so again, Christ reconciles us through his shed blood as we place our faith in him and in what he has done for us. And as a result, we go from being alienated and enemies to this place that we are now presented by Jesus Christ. And the wonderful thing about that word presented is it means that Jesus himself stands close beside us, stands with us. And the interesting thing is instead of being enemies now, he stands alongside of us and he presents us. As he stands alongside us, he presents us. And it describes three ways or three characteristics that are now evident in our lives. The first one is holy. And that holiness, you know, we often think of it as righteous, uh, but the idea is that it is we are different. And that is true. Once we are reconciled, we come now into that relationship with God through Christ, and we are different than we were before. We are set apart from where we were before, and we're set apart for God, for God to use us, for us to have that relationship with God. 
And then he uses, Paul does, two other words to describe the difference. Uh, life on the other side of reconciliation. And he uses the word blameless and above uh, reproach. And blameless uh, speaks really of morality. And it's the idea that we are without fault. We are without the effect of sin in our lives, morally, as a result of being reconciled by Christ. And then above reproach is that we're not convictable. And that's the idea of legally. And you know, when we speak of, uh, of legally, when we, we think about our relationship with God, there's a word called justification. And that justification is that we are, by God, declared innocent legally. That we are not found guilty by God in His holy court. And so this passage, it begins by looking at the idea that we were alienated, we were enemies by God, but now, he stands alongside us. He makes us different. We are morally without the impact of sin and that we are legally not convictable. But the interesting thing is, is in that next verse, verse 23, what it says, if indeed you continue in the faith. And so one of the interesting things, you know, that sometimes causes trouble for us in that passage because, well, if we continue in the faith, this happens. But no, the real idea is that that has happened. That has happened. And if that has happened, we will and should continue in the faith. All right. So we look at that verse and we almost say, well, if we continue in the faith, then what has just been described will happen. But it's really the reverse that if what has been described in the previous verses has happened, then that will encourage us to continue in the faith, to persist in the faith, to persist in a way that suits the objective that we have just talked about, that faith that is rooted and that is grounded and that is established in our lives as a result of our faith in Jesus Christ. And so this passage, it is a, it's a fascinating passage for us as we look at it. And again, it's meant to be an encouragement for us that we realize that we were once in a place where we were alienated by our own choosing from God. We were enemies by, to, of God by our own choosing. And now as a result of our faith in Jesus Christ, he stands alongside us. He makes us blameless. He makes us above reproach because we have received the gospel of Jesus Christ, that gospel that has been preached to us. And now we were able to have that faith that is grounded and that is established. And we no longer have to worry about being moved away from the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And we say, amen and amen. Thank you for joining me today for this ministry moment. I pray that it blesses you and that it blesses your family. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon here at First Baptist Church in Clay Center, Kansas.